Hi everyone, Amy here at Studio 23, your curator of exhibits and memberships. We're back with another installment of our 50 Artists of the Great Lakes Bay Region Artist Spotlight. This week, we are going to hear from Danielle Cato. Danielle works in a unique process called Kintsugi in which she recreates ceramic vessels from broken pieces. Danielle is going to be sharing her process with us and telling us a lot more about that in today's video. You can see a reproduction of Danielle's artwork as a part of our Art Around the City public art installation on the Historical Museum of Bay County Building that's located in downtown Bay City on Washington Street between 9th and 10th. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to Danielle. Hi guys, this is Danielle Cato here to talk to you about Kintsugi and my process for doing Kintsugi repairs. Um, but before I start that, I first wanna say thank you so much to Studio 23. Um, I actually do uh, some pottery as well. And I learned everything I know from the classes at Studio 23. And so it's, um, it's a great honor to be here. And I'm really excited to um, talk to you guys about Kintsugi. So, Kintsuki is a Japanese word and it literally means golden joinery. And the purpose of Kintsuki originally was to repair items and make them useful again. And uh, one of the um, hallmarks of Kintsuki and the appreciation of Kintsuki is wabi-sabi. And that's basically meaning that we, um, we appreciate things that come back to life and we look at the flaws in the repair, but we see them as beautiful instead. And so it's really about rebirthing pieces to new life. And um, that's what I absolutely love about it. So a little bit about Kintsuki itself, the process. Um, Kintsuki is a process by which we go through many, many steps to um, repair a, a broken piece of pottery. And basically what you do is you go through um, steps of mending it together and then you'll fill in some cracks. And then after you fill in cracks, you'll use lacquer to um, seal off all of those seams. And then the final stage, what you do is you apply um, gold or uh, silver powder to the seams itself. And that's actually what highlights um, the, the beauty of, of the seam or the break itself. And so um, I've got gloves on um, using the, it's called uh, Arushi lacquer and the Arushi lacquer um, comes from the sap of a tree um, that is found in Japan. And the lacquer itself is very much poison ivy like. Um, the, the oil that causes the reaction for poison ivy is called um, Urushiol oil. And the Urushiol oil actually is got its name from the Urishi tree. So um, I've got some here. So you guys can just see what there's different types of lacquers. And the lower quality lacquers come from the base of the tree. And that's what we use during the mending process. And then as we start to put the layers over top of that in preparation for the final layer of gold, um, you'll use a higher, it's like a higher quality lacquer that um, that's, receives the gold powder a little bit better. So they come like this. Um, I get them from um, a gentleman um, in Japan, and I actually had to uh, wait quite a quite a while because um, during COVID we we weren't accepting um, any packages or mail from um, from overseas. So it's actually been a while since I've sourced uh, since I've sourced anything. But okay, what I've got here um, are a couple different pieces in different phases. So uh, the first thing that you need to do when you are doing a repair is you have to figure out how all of the pieces fit together. And so what you'll do is you'll take the broken piece of pottery and you'll start to plan. And so the first thing that you'll do is you'll put them together kind of like a puzzle piece, tape them together, um, and then you'll start to figure out, well, what's the best way to put this back together? Um, because between each stage, there is a curing process. And the curing process requires a couple different things. This right here is a, it's a muro. It's a, uh, it's a drying box and well, it's a, it's a cooler, <laughs> but the, uh, how it works is, um, you'll put your piece in there and there's a hole at the top of it. And it has like a, like a night light light bulb in there. And what that does is it creates a warm environment 
And then you also put a little bit of water in the bottom or like a warm paper or like a wet paper towel. And that creates a, a like a, a, a moisture filled environment. And so what have, what makes this lacquer so, so special is that when it is exposed to air and moisture and a temperature, I think it's between like 74 and 76 degrees. I forget exactly what it is, but under those conditions, the lacquer itself starts to polymerize and harden. And so it's a non-reversible process, which means once it's hardened, it's hardened. And that was why um, it was so effective at um, mending mending broken pottery. So under those special conditions, basically you can start to repair your piece. Um, how you do it is to do the initial mending. So once you have your plan, you have all your pieces together. When you do your initial mending, um, you make a water and flour mixture and you kind of make it into like a paste. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll add a little bit of lacquer to that and it makes uh, and it makes like a thicker paste. And then what you do is you'll put the pieces together and then you'll tape them to keep them in place. And then it goes into the drying box and it sits there for maybe like two, three days. So in between each stage, you have to wait for that lacquer to harden. So this is a really time consuming process. The more breaks there are, um, the longer it takes because you have more puzzles, like basically more puzzle pieces to put together. And so what I have here is um, this is a piece, you see it has some chips at the top here. And what I did was I put the broken pieces together and I let that sit. I taped them, let them sit in the drying box. And then um, I brought them out. And then what I did was I made a second kind of mending product. In the second stage, what you would do is you would fill chips and fill cracks. And so what you'll do is you'll mix it up, mix like this powder up again with water and you kind of make it into like a into a paste because um, what you're essentially doing is you're rebuilding where a chip would have been and so you'll make your like you'll make your kind of like your building material your paste um, and then what you'll do is you will back in the drying box and then it sits for it, it sits for some more time to harden and to cure and so I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see this but these were, let me see if I can show you. Yeah. So these were broken chips right here. I'm sorry, not broken chips. These were missing pieces. And so I put those in and I let those sit. And then you can see some spots where there were some actual holes or some chips. And what I did there was I made, I um, made the paste with the powder in the lacquer and I and I kind of smoothed it out. And in between each stage, you're basically sanding, right? So you can see here, what I did was I repaired this and I sanded it last night, but it's starting to contract a little bit. And so I'll probably have to go through with the second layer um, and, uh, and, clean, and clean that up a bit. And so what'll, what we'll do is we will sit that in the, in the mural box again, of course, um, and then keep sanding in between each stage because what you really want is you want it to look like there wasn't ever a chip there in the first place. And so um, it takes some time. Um, after that stage, what we'll do is we would come behind with like a, it's a, a black lacquer. It's called a middle, it's like a mid layer quality lacquer. And you would, and you would basically paint over um, all of the cracks and all of the spots that you filled in and then back in the drying box. And then um, at the final stages, again, you're sanding and you're smoothing it out. But at the very final stage, what you're doing is um, you are using the highest quality lacquer that you have and you're painting it on in a very thin layer. And then you're using gold powder or silver powder. Um, and you're using that to actually dust it on top. The lacquer absorbs it and um, and then that's how you get your gold or your uh, silver uh, finish. That's how you get your final finish. And so um, it's not something I can demonstrate here. Uh, it's, it's a little bit hazardous and actually I don't have anything at that, at that stage quite yet, but um, I am going to follow up behind with um, some pictures so you guys can see this, uh, you guys can see this uh, process start to finish. Hi guys, Danielle Cato again, um, here with some um, images of a project that I did start to finish. Um, this is not the project that is on the placard for the art around the city, but it is the, um, the other piece that I had submitted um, for the 50 artists of the Great Lakes Bay region. And this piece um, is one that I intentionally smashed. 
So this is the before. Um, now, normally, Kintsuki is uh, a way that we repair something that was accidentally broken. Um, but for for this particular case, I had been um, just going through something in my life personally, and um, it left me feeling uh, pretty broken and overwhelmed. Um, and I decided that I would uh, break this vessel on purpose because I had hope that um, my personal situation would um, be redeemed to something beautiful. Um, and so that was uh, how I came to be in this situation where I, I broke this piece um, intentionally. And so this is what it looked like after I broke it. Um, I like to keep all of the smallest pieces, even the ones that are um, so small, it's practically dust um, because it's part of the vessel story. It's part of the vessel's journey. And even though the pieces can't be put, put back together and uh, what's left is a big gaping hole, uh, we're still able to see a beautiful transformation for that um, at the end of this process. And so here, um, I've got a time-lapse video of me putting this together. Um, this took place uh, over the course of many hours. Um, I remember sitting down with this piece thinking, how am I ever going to put this back together? It was really overwhelming. I think that there were over uh, 50 pieces. Um, not all of them made it back into the vessel because some were, were too small. But um, it took a lot of time and a lot of patience. And I think that... Um, Despite all of that time and effort in the end, um, I was I was happy and glad that I, I spent the time necessary to get to get these pieces back together. Um, what we see on the left hand side here is that very first stage I talked about before, which is the mending stage where um, you'll make a flour and water uh, paste like substance and then you'll add lacquer to it. And then what you do is you apply it to both sides of this of the seam or the break that you want to put together. And so what you can see on the left hand side there is what that looks like before I put um, those pieces together and then before I taped them to um, spend some time in the drying box. So um, on the left hand side, that's what the drying box looks like when something's on the inside. Um, this is a picture that's from a little further along in the process, but um, uh, you get the idea. On the right hand side here is where we started to put um, some of the, um, the, the paste material where we fill in the cracks. Um, and so the, the vessel is pretty messy at this point. Um, you're, you're trying to fill in all of the cracks and you don't want to miss anything and you're trying to um, uh, make sure that all of the seams are, are sealed the best you the best you can get them. But what that results in is just like lacquer everywhere. Um, and so on the left hand side of this um, of this set of pictures, we can see where that's all cleaned off. So between each stage, you're having to clean around all of the seams because you need to know where um, more repairs are needed. And you're really trying to get an idea of what the seams and the breaks look like. So um, you can start to envision how that'll come together. On the right hand side was um, how I had to get a little bit creative to figure out how I was gonna fill that uh, fill that hole in. So what I did was I had, um, I put masking tape on the inside of it to at least create a barrier. Um, so I had a little bit of pressure against which I could um, start to fill that hole in. And so you can see on the on the left hand side, um, that was how I filled in that hole. And uh, that's just a lot of lacquer and stuff. Um, but it's necessary in order to actually get the vessel to um, to its original to its original shape. And so um, that. From the previous images, it went and it dried for a while, of course, and then I had to bring it back out and sand it down and clean the seams again. So up at the top there, that uh, that hole is, is still looking pretty gnarly. So we had a few, quite a few more stages of um, putting the powder and the water and the lacquer mixture uh, to get that um, to get that nice and smooth. So here we are in the box again, and then we had to do um, some additional layers. Uh, to, to, to continue to fill in that hole um, because every time uh, I put it in and, and I had uh, had it dry, it would contract a little bit. And so I had to keep going back and putting more and um, more additional layers on there um, so I could get it eventually to be flush uh, with the original shape um, of the vase. And then here you can also see was where I started to um, add some black lacquer. So this is that middle layer lacquer. It's not quite to where we're adding the gold, but it's the next stage um, of getting uh, those seams nice and finished and smooth. And so the, um, the hole is looking pretty nice. 
um, at this point. Um, it's starting to actually look like uh, it has the original shape of the vessel and then um, of course there's some more uh, black lac around here as we fill in those um, those seams and, and get them nice and smooth and so on the left that's um, after it's cleaned up a bit and then um, on the right we're uh, back in the drying box and we've got lots more black lac around there so here at this stage um, really starting to sand out some of the um, of the bigger of the bigger seams um, to get it nice and smooth and ready for the final layer of lacquer. And so finally, um, this is where we start to see the gold come in. Um, it's, it's really difficult to get some um, action shots of applying the lacquer and dusting the gold um, because you're all masked, you're all masked up um, because you don't want to inhale any of the gold powder. And so it's just a, don't have enough free hands. I'll, I'll get that figured out eventually, but uh, I don't have um, any images of actually applying it. And so um, after each, even after applying the gold, um, you're cleaning up the seams and um, trying to make those, um, the lines of where the gold are um, is as straight and as smooth as, as possible. And so here we are doing the last little bit of um, gold application, um, polishing it up as uh, the best that we can. Um, and there's still some spots that need to be, um, to be cleaned up to get the, the lines nice and smooth looking. But this is the, uh, this is the after. So um, I've got, I've got qu quite a, um, a vessel to behold here. Um, when I look at this and I think about it from start to finish, it's, uh, it's a little overwhelming because it was just a, smashed vessel and um, to many it may seem completely irreparable um, but for me it, it was months and months of work spending time with this and um, it was worth every little bit of time and effort that I um, that I spent with it and here is um, uh, the vessel side by side with the bottle of uh, broken bits and um, when I had this displayed um, at Studio 23 this past fall it was displayed with the bottle of uh, broken bits as well. And I think that um, the final vessel is, uh, is beautiful and, and, I, and I love looking at it, but all of the broken pieces that were too small to be a part of the original um, repair are still part of uh, the vessel story. And so I think it's a nice representation of um, a healing journey that, um, that we go on um, as people. So that is it. And thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. Thank you all for tuning in today. And thank you so much, Danielle, for sharing that with us. Have a great weekend, everyone. And I hope to see you all in the gallery soon.